Today is the day. We're gonna tear this guy down and see exactly what makes it tick. The Verathon bladder scanner coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Audio jungle. All right, everybody, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is the day that I finally made some time where we are going to tear into this Verathon bladder scanner and see exactly what it is that makes this guy tick. Because, quite frankly, uh, I don't exactly know what's inside one of these. People never actually repair these. We always ship them back to the OEM. And that was always a bad solution because those are very expensive repairs. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I have a Verathon bladder scanner. I have a battery pack, which is charged up using this interesting little charger. So one of the first things I would say that's a mistake for this guy is this is a very expensive charger because they didn't have a barrel jack here. It's actually hardwired. You can see that from one side to the other. It is hardwired, and that means that if anything happens to this bad boy whatsoever, that you are just done. And, and you can tell the cable is a little thin, and right here by the strain relief, you can tell already there's a little bit of a weak point there. This one does work, but that is a weak point, and it is a point of failure. So, guys, um, I might actually open up that guy as well. Let's take a look at the circuitry inside. It feels kind of lightweight. Medical batteries, as I said in another video, they do have some internal monitoring. There are three terminals, which obviously means that they're monitoring something in here. But guys, let's go ahead, get into it. Uh, so the Verathon bladder scanner has a probe. This dingus right here is the probe. It does have a scan button. When you press the scan button, it activates and it does its thing. I have never opened one of these. I have no clue what's inside it. So first off, let me get a torch bit that's going to fit this because it's going to be, let's see, is it this size? Yes, it is. Of course it is. Okay, what is it? Uh, T10? Yes. Okay, so first off, there's two torch bits on the back of the probe. Let's go ahead and open the back of the probe up. So the number one thing that happens to these bladder scanners is people will drop the probe and you will see indents right here. It's usually uh, circles that go around in the black plastic. It sucks. As soon as I see those uh, little circles there, I already know that something is really not going right. And this is a very simple, simple little guy. Uh, so we have regular uh, switch which does have some other circuitry on the back side of it. You see that? Don't really know what's going on there. Um, and then just a simple uh, computer style, what, 8-pin? Yeah, 8-pin. But uh, that's the cord. And here is the probe itself. It's really interesting because there's a large Phillips and then there's two smaller Phillips which go on the connector. Let's go ahead and open it up, see what's going on there. One large Phillips, that's weird. It's really weird. Let's do it anyway. Okay, we got that guy out of the way. Let's get the two smaller Phillips on the connector, just in case. I really don't think that they're supporting anything, but let's try it. All right, there we go. And here we, oh, what? What? Okay. I wasn't suspecting that. Uh, I wasn't expecting that at all, actually. Okay, so it feels like this probe is full of oil. You can see it right there. As soon as I drop the connector, it's a double-sided connector. You see that? How crazy is that? So the double-sided connector, and now it's full of oil. That's lovely. Oh, yeah, mineral oil. Take a look at that. So I have no idea what the mineral oil is for, if it's it's for uh, transfer of the sound energy. Wow, that's a lot of oil too. I almost pulled up this dish. Holy cow. I had no idea that was inside these probes, did you? I mean, maybe if you cracked it or something, you'd know, but geez. Look at that. What a mess. And 
I guess that would make sense because this large screw isn't really structural. It doesn't really do anything. So that would make sense that that's a fill port. So instead of like filling it at the connector, you take out that screw and you fill it right there. Huh. And there is a lot of oil in this guy. Well, I do have my vibratory saw and I can saw this guy right open. I really wish I didn't have to do that because I would like to um, get it open naturally. And I can feel that there's now a motor or a, vibra a vibratory motor inside there. Um, no, shoot. Okay, I'll tell you what, my plans definitely are a little bit different knowing that there's oil inside this stupid thing. Let's do it over this. Um, what's the best way to open this? Well, I've got Phillips. I've got a flat blade. You guys think I'll stab myself in the hand? <laughs> like that doesn't happen. Gosh darn it. All right. What is inside this guy? So normally what I would do is I'd cut around the perimeter here because it's, it's hermetically sealed. Um, but instead, I'm going to see if a flat blade screwdriver can pop this guy open. Now this is a permanent solution, yeah, right? If you ever try and crack this bad boy open, it is, is officially broke. But I can live with that. And I do think that these guys are um, end of life, so it doesn't matter anymore. Oh, I would think I just about have it. Holy cow. This guy's crazy. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Since I have a, a groove cut in there, now we can get flat blade in there and pop it, right? Holy cow. I just want to see what's inside. <laughs> Come on. Now, you guys should be well aware that the build quality of this guy it's obviously really good. This is not a cheap plastic by any means. Right? Wow. And it doesn't help that my hands are covered in this weird oil. Because now everything is slippery. And that's not cool. There we go. Holy cow. Now, before I crack this open, remember uh, back when I did a video talking about what I think is inside it? I think there's a motor that vibrates inside it, and there's obviously an ultrasound crystal, which is listening for the reverb sound that comes back off the semi-full bladder. So let's go ahead and take a look and see, was I right? Was I right? Here, let's go ahead and drop you guys down. There we go. All right, that's a little better. So what is inside this guy? Wow, that thing was built well, really well. I can see something, okay. Oh, wow. Holy cow, okay. So the cross section of this plastic cup is really thick. Way thicker than what I thought. It, cause it, it feels, I don't know. It feels like it's really skinny, but I guess what it is, is the crystal is probably listening and because it's full of oil, there's no air bubbles, which is probably why it's a good thing not to shake these very much. I bet you air bubbles just kill the, uh, the signal transfer. So anyway, here is what it looks like inside. So here you can see the crystal, right? And look what it's doing. It's going just like this. So it's not necessarily vibrating. What it's doing is it's, it's rotating on like a gyroscope and it's scanning back and forth like this. How cool. I never would have expected that. Never, never, never. So I thought it was like a vibratory uh, motor and then it was just listening. But really, this guy is really complex. And I have no idea I have no idea how to get this guy out. I don't feel any screws or anything. 
Man, my hands are covered with this oil. I gotta go get some rags. No, 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 no screws. Wow. So it is just really well sealed. It's crazy because you got your motor down here. Down at the bottom is your motor, which moves the head back and forth as it's scanning. See that? And then you have a card right here, which looks to be almost all hand soldered. See that? That looks like a hand soldered card, small batch. And there's one more motor down at the very base, which rotates it back and forth. Um, okay. So that's wild. And then there's two fasteners down inside, one here and one over there. And those two fasteners release it. I'll just use a T10. It's Allen, but I'm going to use a T10. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out. I really want to see what the motor assembly looks like. Some long fasteners too. So you have to pull the cup off. You have to get this guy separated. I don't know how you do it. It doesn't look like it's threaded or anything. Maybe heat. So you have to pull the guy off in order to get this crystal assembly out. And that's probably why nobody could ever rebuild these things is because it's such a pain and it's pretty much destructive just getting into it. All right, I've almost got it out now. My hands are covered in this weird oil. Oh yes, how cool is that? Okay, so you can see the one motor down here at the base is a 3.4 watt, 7.5 degree. Oh, okay, so it's a stepper motor and it's got certain degrees that it will step back and forth. So it's very precise. And this one here is a stepper motor too. So not only is it on the A axis, would you say that's A? Let's just call it X and Y. So we got an X axis and a Y axis and it's very precise. And the crystal has a wire right here that you can see. It's got uh, a ground and another positive terminal or a center terminal. So only two wires for the crystal. That's crazy. Now if you, I, I also see a serial number engraved in the outside of the crystal right here, um, which is wild. And is that a set screw? Looks like there is a tiny little set screw in there that's holding probably the crystal into its casing. That is so cool. Look at that. So here's an interesting thing. The crystal only goes so many degrees. See that? It goes almost straight up a little bit past and then it can go, I don't know, let's say 45 degrees to the side. So it has to rotate around to position the other side. You see that? Because it doesn't flop like all the way back and forth, back and forth. Just a few degrees and that rotates a few degrees, a few degrees. Very cool. Not expecting that at all. That is wild. So now I could have the pin out because the breakout for the crystal and the breakout for the stepper motor is all in these wires right here. It's what, three wires? So these three wires right here break out into um, your, what, two coils? Yeah, your two coils for the stepper and your uh, um, bifurcated wires for the crystal. That's so cool. Yep, I could actually get the pin out for it. And if I had the pin out, then you could test to see if it's really bad or not, instead of just the, the unit throwing an error code. We could get uh, resistance measurements off of these pins, and then we could get resistance measurements off these pins over here, and that would probably tell us if our coils are good or not. Okay, so uh, let me clean my hands. Some dirtiness going on over here. All right. So since... Um, this guy here is got two stepper motors and it's got a crystal. 
That means that someplace it's got, uh, what, an analog to digital converter. That means it's got two stepper drivers. Um, this should be really good. So I already know that there's going to be two stepper drivers in here and probably an uh, ADAC analog digital converter. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Very cool. Extremely cool. I like that. Um, I might actually donate some of this stuff to a college um, in its current state, you know, taking apart so that people can see the insides of medical technology and what really makes them work. Uh, how cool would that be? You know, a lot of the stuff that you see here on this channel, I actually end up donating a lot of this stuff to local biomed colleges. <laughs> All right, so here is the bladder scanner. Um, it's actually a pretty simple device from what I can see. Um, it's obviously going to have a display controller and along with an input controller. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? I'm assuming that there's fasteners under these feet. That's usually where they would hide them. Oh yeah, all right, cool. A lot of this stuff is like really one-off parts. Take a look at those. There's taper lugs on there and they're press fit, but there's also double-sided tape that somebody put under there to hold them on. And I have seen these machines without the feet on them. All right, and let's see, I like this. So there's a calibration void sticker right here over one of the Phillips holes. So that kind of clues me in on what I gotta do here. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and pull these guys because reasons. <laughs> uh oh, my calibration's void, guys. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny to uh, send this probe back to the company in its current state. You know, telling them it's not reading, but right? <laughs> I'll tell you what I will also do uh, since I have the probe outside of its housing we're gonna go ahead and open this guy up and then I'm going to connect the probe back up properly and we're gonna take a look and see what it really does while it's running I bet you it's gonna throw an error code because the crystal is just gonna be out in the air but that's all right that's okay uh, let's see what else we got yep all right cool I've never opened one of these guys, so this is a moment for me. <laughs> Let's stick the bottom lid over here. All right, holy cow. All right, there's already a bunch of stuff going on. It's got a, um, it's got an interesting card right here. It does not look like there is any um, circuit whatsoever. So this would be like an isolation board or a protection board. Um, I am baffled about that. That's okay. There's a um, seal that goes all the way around. It, you know, it's also a bump sh strip, but it's also your um, your waterproofing seal, you know, because obviously you don't want liquids or anything getting in here. And if you are scanning people's bladders to see how full they are, then you're obviously going to be around, you know, gooey environments. So it's got a series of these large plastic screws and... It's a good thing I got a Phillips one here because there is a whole series of smaller Phillips screws up here in the front. And there is a weird little pattern going on here with the fasteners up in the front of the card. So yeah, they're just holding on to the front bezel, but they're also holding in this card. Look at these little holes that are cut out to, to hold the circuit board. That's a really original idea. I haven't seen anybody do that before. Kind of excited about that. All right, little tiny Phillips one. You can see the back side of my printer right here. So that would also be a, um, well, it's a print drive motor, but you're also gonna have a little stepper in there, you know, because you have to move the print head back and forth at, at designated spots. And I might have to pull the lip seal off to get this card out. Let's see. Right. So what's going on here? Oh, that's interesting. The lip seal is the card. Look at that. Holy cow, guys, that is so cool. 
look at this. Somebody put a lot of extra expense into this by having these um, nut pockets. They're inserted on the back side of this card so that you have something to screw into. Wow, that doesn't doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Why they? Uh, whatever, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. So there's no circuit on this uh, PCB. Well, it's not even a PCB. It's just a uh, silicon board. But that's cool. We'll set it over here. Um. All right, well, here we go. Uh, remember, I said that we are going to have a motor controller and we are going to have a um, uh, some stepper drivers. Well, um, your print controller and stuff is over here, but this right here is going to be your ultrasound board. So let's go ahead and pull the ultrasound board off and get a look at the other side. Now, usually ultrasound, you can tell right here, it's separated by a ribbon cable. Um, so one of the reasons that this guy runs off a of battery is because ultrasound is very sensitive to things like um, switch mode power supplies. Ultrasound is receptive to all sorts of interference. So every time you have ultrasound, it's going to be separated, usually shielded in a box inside the medical device and or it's going to be separate from everything else. You can tell the CPUs are all over here. The ultrasound board is way up here. Um, and that's that's really typical. They they try and isolate the ultrasound from everything else. Smart design. You can tell that almost every inch inside this chassis is pretty much taken up. I like that there's a little test pin header right here. You can see that you have a um, motor, you have a printer, you have a six volt pin header. Um, what else do we have? These here might actually be uh, drivers, okay. And you can see some of the breakout right here for the ultrasound head. It's theta two, theta three, uh, phi three, phi one, theta four. Um, so those are uh, that's the headers for the cable. This guy right here. All right, let's, let's pull the rest of this guy out. I really want to see what's on the top side of this board. Right, here we go. There is a whole lot of stuff built into this board. The more I look at it, the more I realize. So up here, these are all test pins. And they might be a direct pin-to-pin -pin breakout from the port. That's what it looks like anyway. And this header right here. Looks like this header is for programming and or checking these pins. Right. Um, so there are some uh, other test points throughout the board. You can see M ground, uh, A ground, ground, test point 10, 7, 8. So it's, it's well labeled. I like that. Hmm. So there's some uh, capacitors and inductors up here. Usually if there's capacitors and inductors in close proximity to each other, that's a power supply of some sort. So if it's running off uh, three volts or whatever the head is running off of, let's see, where was that motor? Uh, I think the motor was, what did we say? Five volt DC, okay. So it's a five volt motor and this battery is 7.2 volts DC. So they're stepping down the voltage, or at least that's what I think they're doing. But, okay, what else we have? Oh, okay. So the reason that I have this is because the port itself is damaged. You can see right there, the exposed pins. It does work, but it is exposed. Oh, cool. So there's a transformer right here. All right, let's take a look. So I've got two transformers. Let's see, I've got a, what is that? There's a, a fuse of some sort over here. Oh, uh, what else we got? So right here's a header for testing. And, okay, test point two. 
So those pins right there, those guys, do look like they're related to these pins down at the bottom. That's just the way it looks. Um, you can tell that there's other options that they didn't put in. Um, there's definitely some heat sinking right here for a U10, whatever U10 was, not really sure. Um, and there's an interesting thing right here, uh, it's, it's screen printed on, it says, caution, electrostatic discharge sensitive. All right. And remember that I said that there's two stepper drivers that we're going to be in here. I do believe that's these guys right here along the perimeter. See these? And the closest thing to them is the motor port. So instead of the stepper drivers being way on the other side and possibly carrying that towards the port, they're right next to the port and they probably pin out directly over to it. You can see how the board is sectioned off. It's got this uh, silvery stripe down the middle of the board right there. So that kind of shows you the different sections. Um, this guy right here says it's uh, test point 12 and it's F1. Really interesting. Um, dang, not much else I could tell you about this board. Um, obviously, there's there's a couple of your power transformers right here and right here. I've never seen transformers like that, but they are labeled like T1 and uh, T2. So those are transformers. Here, see if I can get you up nice and close. Okay. Um, I'd have to check and see what some of these other chips do, but I'm pretty certain that these over here are the two stepper drivers. And, um, hmm. Well, it would have to do some voltage regulation. Uh, you can see all the caps floating around over here. Another chip. All right, I'm going to have to do my research on those chips and see what they are. But um, I can tell you that this guy over here is a, it looks like it's a voltage regulator. Oh, sorry, my hands are covering it up. Um, it says U6, so I'll, I'll have to check that guy up. But uh, we have two processors, so they process the data over on this side. One of those might be your analog digital converter. Um, they're going to convert it over to digital, and then it's going to come over here. Um, there is an interesting thing here. See this guy right here? This is a timekeeping RAM. So this guy does have a life expectancy, and I imagine that one day you are going to run low on volt voltage on this guy and it's going to start throwing error codes. Wow. I can see over here it says uh, 6 volt unswitched. All right. Huh. Very cool. I do like how they sectioned off. You see how they got this uh, silvery tape that runs around? Um, be interested in what you guys think, but I do think that, that is a sort of noise canceling by running the ground around the perimeter of the different sections of the board. You can see it right there. All the little holes all the way around. Very cool. Very cool. Um, let's see. I've got a test points uh, over here where I can test the uh, voltage. So 6 volt. Uh, let's go ahead and connect this guy. Let's see what it does. Okay, I gotta be really careful because the port is not exactly good. And let's see, I need this header right here, which goes to this motor. <laughs> you can tell where I'm going with this. It's this is gonna be wild. Alright, so the header goes like that. And then this guy here goes like this. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm plugging the header back in, and then that will interface with the cable right here. Now there's a very good chance that I'm going to have this backwards, <laughs> so let's do it like this. I think that's close. Come on, press. So if I get some error codes or something, um, you're going to see why. Okay, so we've got this guy in here. We've got the battery. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work out as well as I, I hope it will. Alright, 
so I gotta maybe tape the battery in. Because it needs the bottom of the case to hold the battery in, I think. Right? Yeah, that's the way it looks. Okay. Alright. So I will try my best to hold the battery in. Come on, power up. not think that she is very happy. What else we got? Okay. So I have a battery eject over here. It's a little sticky. Okay, there we go. What am I missing here? What am I missing? I got the contacts right. The battery's in right. This over here is plugged in right. Huh. Wonder if my battery's dead. Well, that sucks. Okay. So here is where I wish I had my um, desktop switch mode power supply because I can set it up and, and connect jumpers and we'd be off to the races. Okay, well this guy, I think it's good. All right, did I mess something up by taking out? Oh, yes I did, so stupid. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Guys, here is one of those things you just don't realize until you take something apart. Aye. Okay. So I put the battery in, right? You can see right there, that's where the battery terminals are. And I was wondering about these two fasteners right here because they had a they had a large washer on them. They're clearly separate. And there's these test points right next to it. I thought, oh, how cool is that? I didn't realize that on the backside, these risers right here actually screw to the board and that's how you get voltage into the board. So by me sitting there and, and taking it out, it's not touching those lugs, and because of that, it is not going to ever power on because it's not getting voltage. All right, well, let's see. How do we get this guy back in? All right, come on. There we go. There we go. All right, so I need to put those two screws back in for sure, or else it's never going to power up. So that would be this one. All right. Who'd have thought that it was going to use like a riser like you'd see in a PC for, <laughs> for voltage? Wow. The things you learn, huh? Okay, let's screw this guy back down. All right. Now my battery is officially connected to the rest of the machine. So stupid. Okay. Let me connect this guy back up. Nice and neat. Very gentle because it's damaged. All right, so let me turn this around. Okay, I'm making a mess of everything. I want it so that you guys can see what it's doing. Okay, so this guy here should be connected properly. I'm gonna hold it while I power the device up. There we go. <laughs> How about that, huh? All right, let's see, it says calibration, do something, something okay. Okay. All right, we're good. So right here is the scan button. So let's see, I'm gonna stand this guy up. Press scan. Okay, it says ready to scan. Oh, how cool is that? Okay. I it did not like that at all, and I think it's because of the oil. Um, let's see. Let's, let's put this guy in a vise to hold it up so that you guys can see it better. I do think that it it's uh did it overheat. It's probably really sensitive. There we go. Okay. So here we go. I think I have everything connected properly. 
And let me put the battery back in. And let me get you guys closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. How about that? All right, let's do this part up. This time I will hold this guy up. Come on, power up. Okay. <laughs> That's so cool. All right. Um, let's see if I can get this phone even closer while it's doing this thing. Let's see. This time I'm going to hold the battery in really well. Okay, let's do a scan. Okay, and here in the scan window, you can see what it thinks the, uh, what the cross section is. You see that little uh, scale right there? And let's do a scan. Look at that. It's like a critical error or something and it shuts off and that's it. That's all she wrote. And it didn't do that before. So that just goes to show you what the bladder scanner is doing. So guys, this kind of concludes the inside teardown of a bladder scanner. Um, how crazy is that? Um, what can I say other than it's an amazing little piece of technology and that this little guy right here is, uh, it's saving people lots of money and lots of infections because if you have to run a catheter on patients then you are taking an increased risk at getting like a UTI or a urinary tract infection so what they do is they do a bladder scanner on a patient that way there you know if the patient has been excreting the way that they should be and if their bladder is starting to get really full and they the patients unable to relieve themselves then what they'll do is they'll run a catheter this is basically a prevention technique, and it it is what it is. It's just an absolute amazing piece of tech. And I'm glad that you guys were here to go along with me on the ride. So I hope you like these kind of videos. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned because I'm going to do more teardowns like this as we go forward. I think it's going to be super cool. Thanks, guys.